we have got one patient of rheumatoid arthritis here and uh, what is mentioned some synovial fluid specimen has been taken and in that specimen what we found is type 2 collagen molecules. We understand that during pathological conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, there can be some degenerative changes and some of the collagen in these tissues can move into the synovial fluid. So as they are mentioning it is type 2 collagen molecules. We have been asked which of the following structure having type 2 collagen in their architecture was responsible for this kind of sediment. Whether it is the vascular endothelium or the smooth muscles or the articular cartilage or the bone tissue itself. We know that when we are talking about rheumatoid arthritis, it is an autoimmune inflammatory disease which is going to involve the synovial membrane in the beginning. Synovial membrane will be undergoing hypertrophy, there will be a lot of vascularity, a lot of uh, synovial fluid is being secreted. There is proliferation of granulation tissue and later in this disease, there is involvement of the articular cartilage and along with that there is also involvement of the bone. So not only there is a problem with the vascular structures but later with the bone as well as the cartilage. And before we mark our answer here, let us gather some detail about a synovial joint. As we talk about rheumatoid arthritis, it is basically involving the small joints of the hand and the feet. Mostly they are females. There is bilateral involvement of the distal joints, specifically metacarpophalangeal joint, proximal interphalangeal joint. In the morning, there will be soft tissue swelling, which is painful bilaterally, that kind of uh, presentation. Now, as we draw the diagram of a synovial joint here, say this is the metacarpal bone here, articulating with the proximal phalanx, making the metacarpophalangeal joint. Since it is a synovial joint, they'll be lined by a capsule. We can show the capsule connecting the two bones here and it is made up of collagen fibers. Then we can mention this capsule is lined by synovial membrane on the inner side. And that synovial membrane is not only covering the inner side of the capsule but also lining the bones. But we have to be careful as it is lining the bone. The synovial membrane is not going to encroach upon the articular surfaces because on the articular surfaces we'll have the articular cartilage. So we'll be drawing it but you can show the synovial membrane on this side as well lining the inner side of the capsule and also part of the bone except the articular surfaces. And this is the synovial membrane which will be actually involved in the rheumatoid arthritis. But before we discuss that, we have to mention about the articular cartilage also. The articular cartilage is lining the articular surfaces of the bones to keep them smooth for smooth movements at the synovial joint. So this is the articular cartilage. Now we have to be careful about mentioning the type of cartilage here. Articular cartilages mostly they are hyaline cartilage lining the end of the bones and keeping them smooth. And the type of collagen fiber they'll have is type 2 collagen fibers. In our question we have found that the synovial fluid was having some molecules of type 2 collagen fiber that could have been due to degeneration of the articular cartilage. And what about the degeneration of the bone? Bones they are having type 1 collagen. So as you're talking about metacarpal bone or the proximal phalangeal bone, the type of collagen they have is type 1 collagen. So bone is having type 1 collagen and cartilages usually they'll have type 2 collagen. Now in rheumatoid arthritis there is progressive involvement of the synovial membrane and the synovial membrane will be undergoing proliferation, higher vascularity, secreting more of synovial fluid, forming what is called as panus, which can be seen in the next diagram. So here as you see we are talking about the metacarpophalangeal joint or maybe proximal interphalangeal joint there is formation of the panus. See in the normal joint the thickness of synovial membrane can be observed but now this synovial membrane has undergrown hypertrophy. There is a lot of granulation tissue and dense inflammatory cells can be seen. Now as the synovial membrane is getting more and more thickened it is secreting more of fluid and later it can involve the articular cartilage. 
and not only the articular cartilage is undergoing degeneration but the bone is also degenerating later there can be fibrous ankylosis or the bony ankylosis the joint space is decreasing and as we have mentioned most of this rheumatoid arthritis is seen in females with bilateral involvement morning stiffness soft tissue swelling and later when we look at these patients there will be some deformities like boutonniere deformity or swan neck deformity as we have been mentioning there is involvement of metacarpophalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint. Usually the distended phalangeal joints are not involved. They can be involved in other cases like that of aging, osteoarthritis and there can be involvement of distal interphalangeal joint not in rheumatoid arthritis. And we have to understand if it is a case of osteoarthritis again there will be degeneration of the articular cartilage and there can be sediments of type 2 collagen in the synovial fluid as we already have known in the patient given to us in the question but that patient is not of osteoarthritis that is a case of rheumatoid arthritis now why do you take the synovial fluid specimen it is for the differential diagnosis which type of arthritis are we talking about and then monitoring the disease which kind of intervention you want to do is it pharmacological or surgical and even monitor the progression whether the disease is healing or not now talking about the type of collagen we have mentioned bones are normally having type 1 collagen cartilages usually will have type 2 collagen there are several type of collagen types which we have to know but basically the first four types are coming in our exams so let us enumerate the four types and the places they can be found our details all go according to the type of questions we get in the exam and we are going to make a table for the type of collagen like we mentioned type 1 2 3 and 4 are the types where we are going to focus more upon among these the type 1 is the most abundant type of collagen and as we mentioned type 1 to be the most abundant where do you find this type of collagen at uh, many places one we can start with is the bone so bone is having type 1 collagen whereas if we are talking about cartilage the cartilage is usually having the type 2 collagen but here we have to be careful it is going to be the hyaline cartilage and the elastic cartilage not the fibro cartilage and why not the fibro cartilage because fibro cartilage is a typical cartilage and it is having feature of bone it has less of type 2 collagen and more of type 1 appearing similar to the bone so as we mentioned the fibro cartilage is a typical cartilage having features of bone fibro cartilage has abundance of type 1 collagen and less amount of type 2 collagen and that is why it is called as atypical cartilage normally cartilage should have abundance of type 2 collagen and they are hyaline cartilage cartilage then what about the type 3 collagen type 3 collagen is giving us the reticular fibers and is forming the framework of several organs like the lymphoid tissue so lymphoid tissue like the liver or you can talk about the others like spleen or lymph node along with that the reticular fibers type 3 collagen fibers can also be seen in the blood vessels like the aorta here we are talking about the layers of the blood vessels like the tunica media tunica adventitia they are having the type 3 collagen fibers and what about the type 4 collagen fibers then type 4 collagen can be seen in the basement membrane like the support of the epithelial tissue or it is helping us in filtration like in kidneys the glomerular membrane now there are some other examples which we have to take a question has come what type of collagen fiber do you see in recent healing tissue granulation tissue if it is a recent healing tissue then you'll have the type 3 collagen fibers so type 3 collagen fibers are found in the recent healing tissue or the granulation tissue what about the old scar if we are talking about the old scar then we have to change our answer to type 1 collagen so type 1 collagen is found in the old scar tissue we should also know that type 1 collagen which is the most abundant type of collagen is found in the skin dermis also a question has come more than 80 percent of the fibers in the skin dermis will be that of type 1 collagen so it's a long list which you have to remember as an examples for for the various type of collagen fibers and then we can talk about some collagenopathies like osteogenesis imperfecta which type of collagen is compromised 
In that case, we are talking about type 1 collagen. There'll be brittle bones, spontaneous fracture, osteogenesis imperfecta. And if it is a problem of type 2 collagen, there can be chondrodysplasias, cartilage disorders, and type 3 collagen pathies. There can be weakness of some of the organs. Like there's a vascular type of ehler danlos syndrome where we see the aortic aneurysm, rupture of aorta, ehler danlos syndrome. Vascular type, type 3 collagen has been compromised. Talking about type 4, Alport syndrome, glomerular nephritis. There's a problem with the basement membrane in the glomerulus leading to some nephritis-like features. Now coming back to our question, our patient, we have taken the cerebral fluid aspirate and in the sediment we are finding type 2 collagen and we wanted to know whether it is something to do with the vascular structures which we can see with vascular structures, it should be more of type 3 collagen and even type 1 collagen. Or was it something wrong with the cartilage? If it is cartilage, then type 2. This seems to be a better answer. Can't be bone because in case of bone, it should be type 1 collagen. And let us go back to the question now, where it becomes evident that if it is a case of rheumatoid disease and in the cerebral fluid, we are getting the type 2 collagen molecules, then it cannot be the bone. It should be the cartilage. Our answer should be articular cartilage. And what about the vascular components, the endothelium or vascular smooth muscles? Usually that will be type 3 collagen in relation, not type 2. Since it has been specified as type 2, the most probable answer here is choice number D. The autoimmune disorder has not only involved the synovial membrane, but also encroached upon the articular cartilage degenerating the type 2 collagen from there, which has landed up in the synovial fluid. So we should keep our answer as choice number D.